What's good with YouTube, y'all already know? Big Vlaco with the comics reaction. We're almost smash, dash, and slide on through with another reaction, man. <laughs> Anyways, man, hit the like, subscribe, comment, do all those things to help support this channel. And hit that bell notification for future fire content. Well, so, I seen a video, man, and I didn't know where it was going to go, man. It was with Mr. Criminal. And it was talking about how he ran into an individual that... You know, they use the word D.O. loosely down south, right? I'm going to sit there and say someone who's not in good standings within, you know, the Southern Collective. Either they locked it up, you know what I'm saying? You know, who knows what details are behind this individual having a fallout. Now, this was an individual that helped him in the rap game, you know what I'm saying? They had a, a lot of support and love for each other, right? A relationship, a family-like relationship, and he runs into him. And he doesn't know if he's supposed to take flight up on him. He doesn't know if he's supposed to embrace him, ignore him, or whatnot. So he pretty much, you know, went about his business, you know, uh, you know, ordered his mail. The individual also was there, you know, getting lunch. And the dude ends up going back to his studio. And eventually he tells him, you know, this may not be a good look for you being here. You know what I mean? And they parted ways. Now, you could tell from watching the video that it really bugged Mr. Criminal. And, um... You know, I'm just gonna say the reason why I bugged him was that was the human side. That was not the gangster fucking Mr. Criminal. That was not the, uh, you know, what I'm saying the rapper Mr. Criminal. That was the human side. The uh, the father Mr. Criminal. The friend Mr. Criminal. You know, a person who is actually has emotions behind a situation that bothered him. You know, you know. Every time I'm ready to criticize Mr. Criminal, because sometimes I think he's a little bit boisterous. Sometimes a little bit too. Uh, flamboyant or you know thinks he's a little bit superior and whatnot right he always does something that kind of surprises me right that brings me back that he's just a regular dude and this is a situation just like that he doesn't pretend like he knows what he's supposed to do you know as far as uh you know on the street code street politics prison politics level he's never been to prison and there's a lot of people that get put in these situations where they run into homeboys that are inactive from their hood or not in good standings right and i think it all depends upon what they did to be in no good standings you know if a homeboy locked it up or got in a drug debt and locked pc it up whatever a lot of times homeboys are gonna look at that man they made a mistake they're not they can't be in good standings or brought back but you know they're not a target and see you know the north and south is a little bit different when it comes to these type of situations you know um i used to tell homeboys unless they committed a serious fucking infraction don't even worry about it. You know, don't go out of your way to sit there and, you know what I'm saying, have a fucking, you know, weekly friendship where you're rocking everywhere, right? But if you're chopping it up right, so be it, right? You know, if you want to do a little bit of business on the DL, so be it. You know, we used to tell homeboys, you know, that worked for our crews that unless they committed certain crimes like they told or they shed blood of one of our own, the, the availability to do business with people who are not in good standings, it was okay. Go ahead. Because they hadn't committed enough crimes that were really an issue that was being brought to the table. See, that's what it comes down to. What did he do? You know? And I think we all know that usually there's more to the situation at hand when it comes to individuals getting crossed up or the politics. But a lot of times we will know better than to really voice our opinions, so we just go with the flow. And sometimes that's the best thing to do for one's own safety, you know. People got to live out there, you know what I'm saying. And it gets dangerous out in the street. So you want to bring anything that's going to get anybody pissed off to where you become a target. Now, I, I have certain homeboys I know, not just from my hood, right, but from different bodies in San Jose. Some cats that are active, right. And you'd be surprised that some of these individuals, and I will never put their names out there, right, who have touched base to, with me and reached out to me because of the friendships that we had. And that they know that whatever happened, you know, on my plate had nothing to do with them, you know. And, you know, it, it's a hard situation, you know. Like, there's certain people like that I've built friendships and relationships with, you know what I mean. And I get it with some of these other cats that they run into people that they had friendships with that are no longer active. You know, true friendships. And you're listening to someone who really you may not even have any type of relationship with because that's just what the rules of the game are. You know, and, and that's where things kind of, like I said, get twisted and fucked up that, you know, your life should never be dictated on a day-to-day -day basis on who you associate with based upon prison politics. 
A lot of times you're following a man that you have no relationship with and could care less about what you do, right? Unless you bring money to them or whatnot, they give a fuck about you, but yet you have to follow these rules. Because someone is not active, you cannot talk to them. You know, I think Mr. Criminal, only he knows if he handled it right. You know, like I said, if the dude really didn't do nothing that's fucking really piss anybody off, I mean, having a, a brief conversation, you know what I'm saying, and, you know what I'm saying, cutting, cutting ways, right? I don't see that to be an issue as far as, you know, from the active standpoint, right? But there's dudes that I know to this day that in their neighborhoods, they will fuck with people who are not active in their hoods because that's their loved one, that's their homeboy. And that's whether you're up north or down south. But a lot of people won't talk about it. It's one of those hidden truths that everybody knows, but nobody's even speaking on. I've known big homes from both sides, right? That have talked and kicked it with individuals who were no longer active, but this was their homeboy. I know regiments that were being ran up north by NF members where they had individuals that were not in good standings working with the regiment. All this stuff is true. So, you know, um, like I said, it depends on what they did and it depends on what you're involved in and what information you have. If you're not giving them information that has to do with any type of street business, right, or, or south side business or MA business, then I don't think there's no really, there's no really problem with it. But because Mr. Criminal is who he is, people catch wind of it, they're going to make a bigger issue out of it, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and I, I kind of respected that at least Mr. Criminal had the fucking the balls to bring it up and be real about the situation. You can't fault him for for uh, questioning what he should should and shouldn't have did. And another thing, because an individual decides to lock it up and go SMY and not be active no more, is that really worth sending a youngster to go after that dude? If he didn't tell on nobody, if he didn't do this or commit any type of crimes, is it really worth it to send a youngster to maybe catch a life sentence or catch him a long time? For somebody that that gave the order that maybe they fucking will be no good in five years from now. Those are all things you have to consider. You know, and, um, you know, people never brought up this topic. And I think that this is a topic that can also be brought up for individuals from up north. Because there's a lot of dudes up north that will rock it with their homeboys from their hood, like I said, that are not in good standings. It's the truth. Nobody talks about it. You know, it's one of those things, you know, people are private about. Don't promote it. Don't fucking, you know, post it all up and showcase what you're doing. And you don't do that, you won't have no issues. But like I said, it's all going to come down to what they did. If it's just them locking it up, ain't nobody going to be tripping. If it's they got deemed politically, nobody's really going to be tripping. But if they did something against a big homie or disrupted the money or told or something like that, then it's going to be a fucking problem. You know, I know up north that... There wasn't green lights just put up on somebody just because they decided to fucking lay it down or lock it up. The only time there was really a mandatory green light no matter what was if they were an NF member that walked away. Regardless if they did some treasonous or not, just walking away was considered treason and a green light would be put up on them. But all the other stuff, nah. You know. I don't know if it's the same down south, but I would like to think it probably is, you know. Like I said, you don't want to sit there and be fucking... You know, being road dogs and being seen 24-7 everywhere because that's going to raise issues. But everything else, nah, I don't see it being a problem. But then again, that's their street politics, that's their beliefs. And for the most part, from my understanding, it's not a problem. With that said, Big Flacco from a Convict's Reaction, I'm out.